at the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles upon in your name. As I lift my voice in praise. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Everlasting Father, it's all about you. Thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by, by anything, but it's just by your mercy. Holy Spirit, less of me, more of you. Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the great and mighty things you are doing in foundation on a solid rock ministry. Thank you, Lord, for using me as a vessel unto honor. Thank you, Lord, for all the members of the ministry. Thank you, Lord, for everything, for your mercy, for your kindness, for everything. Daddy, I return all the glory to you. Father, we've come to learn at your feet. Father, please teach us, Lord. Less of me, more of you. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but doers of your word. And at the end of the day, all the glory, my Father, shall be returned unto you. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. At the center of it all is Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time you are connected. And I know that you've had a very wonderful week. I've always, I've always had a lovely week and I've had a powerful week. And this week we're entering is going to be the best week for us in the name of Jesus. We have some few more days to the end of the month of September 2018. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Before the, the end of this month, you will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Every pending testimony, everything that the enemy has been holding against your life. In this month, the Lord in his mercy will return, will re, will return it for, to you in the name of Jesus. God bless you, everybody. As usual, my name is Eva. Angelis Mary O Ajakaye. It's so nice to see you in the spirit. So this afternoon, the Lord has given us a topic and is in the fourth watch. In the fourth watch. We're going to be reading from Matthew 14. Matthew 14 verse 25. The Bible says, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea at the fourth watch. What is the fourth watch? The fourth watch lasts from 3 a.m. until 3 until 6 a.m. in the morning. The fourth watch normally lasts from 3 a.m. in the morning until 6 a.m. Now let us quickly read Isaiah 50 verse 10. Isaiah 50 verse 10. Isaiah 50 verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servants? Who walks in darkness? And has no lights. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Look at what the Bible said. He said, who among you fears the Lord? As children of God, we must have the fear of God. As children of God, we all have the fear of the Lord. Who obeys the voice of his servants? Jesus Christ, even as a prophet, as a prophetess, as a spiritual leader, or whatever the Holy Spirit tells you. Who obeys the voice of his servant? When the Lord sends an individual to you and say, Thus says the Lord, and you obey. When the Holy Spirit ministers to you and you obey him. Who obeys? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Do you know what the Bible is telling us? That there are some times we're going to experience darkness in our life. Now the Lord is telling us that if you are experiencing darkness, let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Job experienced darkness. Job lived and ex he lived a righteous life. Job was so righteous that even when his children go on a party, he will say, paraventure they've sinned, he will offer sacrifice. He lived an, a, a wonderful life. He lived a life that was, it was, it was right. And the devil noted him. Job experienced darkness. Let's quickly go to the book of Job 19. Job 19. The Lord Almighty that ordained this topic. I'm sure it's for somebody. Job 19 verse 8. Job 19 verse 8. The Bible says, He has fenced up my way so that I cannot pass. 
Job came to that situation, situation in his life. He said, and he has set darkness in my path. He looked to the front, it was dark. He looked to the side, it was dark. He looked to the back, it was dark. He was surrounded by darkness. Job experienced darkness. Jeremiah also experienced darkness. Jeremiah, he, he preached. He preached to the people. He told them a lot of things. He said, this is what the Lord said. Thus says the Lord. They beat him. They flogged him. Jeremiah was, a, in fact, that man is somebody that, you know, when the Lord called me to the ministry, he said, I should go and read it very well. I should go and read about Jeremiah. Jeremiah, if you go to the book of Jeremiah 9 verse 1. Jeremiah 9 verse 1. You know, sometimes when you are, when the Lord calls you, you start saying, you start giving different excuses. The Lord said, go and read it. So I read it. It's usually called the weeping man of God. I read it and I'm like, okay, no problem. Jeremiah 9 verse 1 says, Oh, that my head were waters. Jeremiah was flogged. He was beaten. He was beaten by his own people. He was imprisoned. But yet, look at what he said. He said, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. He still had passion. He was still saying, Ah, these people, if only I could just cry my eyes out. Despite the flogging, the beating, the prophet slapped him. A lot of things that Jeremiah went through. He went through that darkness. There was a time they threw him into, the, into a, a pit that the Lord had to raise an Enoch for him. He went through a lot. Apostle Peter also went through a lot. He suffered it. If you go to the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8. Apostle Paul was such, if you read the Bible very well, Apostle Paul was, his zeal was for God. All the other apostles had the zeal of God. But his own was in another level. He didn't fear death. He wasn't afraid of anything. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8. It says, For we do not, we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we, that we were burdened beyond measure. Above strength, so that we despaired even of life. He went through a lot. I don't know what it is you are going through, my brother, my sister. I don't know what it is. I don't know that darkness that you are going through. Sometimes our darkness is in the valley. You know, darkness, you know, there was one time that the Bible says that some people were mocking the Israelites. They were saying, oh, their God is a God of a mountain. He's not a God of valley. God said, I am the God of valley. I am both the God of valley. I am both the God of mountain. Valley is always the bottom parts. Mountain top, when you're at the mountain top, you know, you can see above, your shoulder is high, you can speak when others are speaking. You can also say, okay, they are doing this, I can also do it. But when you're at the valley, Apostle, uh, brother, Paul, uh, brother David, we, he, 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 he went through it. Let's go to Psalm 23. He went through it in his life. There are some times you're at the valley. People might not know it. You're at the valley. Look at what he wrote. Look at what uh, King David wrote. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. You know, it's very easy for us. So many times we've read that Bible. But some of us, we even know it offered. But you must look at what he, he was going through at that particular time. He was at the valley time, valley period. He said, he leads me beside the still water. Let's go to verse 4. He says, Yo, ye do I walk through the valley. Of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He was at a point of death. He was at a situation whereby it, death was looking at him in the face. He said, even though he's in that valley, I don't know what your valley is. It could be financial valley. It could be marital valley. It could be social valley. It could be in your workplace. It could be in your business. Whatever it is. Look at what he said. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The finger of God. The rod of the Lord is his finger. It touches you. And your staff. Authority. They comfort me. The presence of the Lord comforted him. Sometimes God doesn't tell us why we are going through the problem. Because he wants us to know who he is. Sometimes God doesn't tell us why we are going through that dark period. He doesn't tell us why we are in the valley top. He doesn't tell us why it seems that everything around us is, is dark. 
because he wants us to know who. When you don't understand, when you've looked to the front, you've looked to the back, you've called all your relatives, nobody is there for you. You've called all your, all your loved ones, nobody is there for you. You've looked at the situation, you've even been to the lawyer, the lawyer said, I cannot help you. Look at what the Bible is saying. When you don't know, or when you don't understand how, when you don't know what is happening, you cannot even phantom me. You look at it, you say, ah, but I am not living in sin. I am living very right. I have not committed anything. Father, why am I going through this? When you don't understand, you must know the Lord. The moment Job began to understand the difference between why to relationship, his, his mindset changed. The moment Job began to stop questioning and stop saying, why am I going through this? Why is it me? Look at what happened. After all, I serve God. Why is my wife this? Why did my wife mock me? Why are my friends saying this? He now began to talk about the relationship. Let's go to Job 42. Job 42. So my brother, my sister, if you don't know why, if you cannot say the reason why you are going through it, like when you've looked around, you said, ah, but I've not done anything. I know that I didn't do anything. Everything the Lord is telling me to do. You, you know, sometimes you need to check yourself and say, was there any time that the Lord told me to do something and I didn't do it? If you are very certain that whatever the Lord has told you to do, you did it and you are living a, right, a righteous life and you are going through some certain things, begin to know about the relationship. Let's go to Job. And I know that the Lord Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Our God is able, he's able, he's able to see us through. Job 42 verse 5. Job 42 verse 5. God is great. God is wonderful. You know, you know, I keep saying it on the platform that I don't know how people are coping without Christ. Job 42 verse 5. He says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. <laughs> His inner ears opened. He now understood that this one is about relationship. It's not about question. Sometimes enough, okay, yes, you are going through a problem. Stop wallowing about it. Stop crying about it. It is time for you to now talk about your relationship. That relationship with God will make you go through that valley period. It will make you go through that water you are passing through. He says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the hair. But now my eye sees you. My eye sees you. When you, my brother, my sister, the prayer you must be praying now is to have a revelation of the Lord. When you have a revelation of the Lord, your life can never remain the same. People might be wondering, oh, evangelist, doesn't she sleep? Why is she so zealous, oh God? How is she coping? When the Lord visits you, your zeal will go, it will, it will be parachutes. It is a revelation. When you don't know why you are going through the darkness, trust the relationship. Trust the relationship. Job said, he said, now I see you. You know, I've shared it so many times and I will keep sharing it. The day I prayed to the Lord, very recently, I said, Lord, I've said, the Lord has visited me so many times. I now said, you know, as a child, you, anytime you ask, I said, Lord, I want to see you again. And the Lord, my eyes, I just said, the Lord said, go to bed. He said, go to bed. It was in the night. He just said, go to bed. I, I thank God I obeyed. Within a minute, I just lay down. It was an open vision. I saw lights. It was a human figure. Light. I hugged him. And he, my eyes opened. He went, climbed the steps, came out, came out through the street, looked right, looked left. I didn't see him again. Light. How would I not have you, my brother, my sister? So when you don't know why you are going through the darkness, so when I'm going through some certain things, when I cannot understand why, I know that I have a very big God, hey, who is always by my side, a very big God, oh, by my side, by my side. When I look to the right, I see my Lord Jesus. When I look to the back, I see my Lord Jesus. When I look to the front, I see my Lord Jesus. When I look to the side, I see my Lord Jesus. I have seen, seen the downfall of of Satan, glory be to God, glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan, glory 
be to God. Amen. When I look, when I look at my right, I see Jesus by my side. When I look at my left, I see Jesus by my side. When I look to the back, I see Jesus by my side. When I look to the front, I see Jesus by my side. I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Amen. So when you don't know why you are going through the darkness, whenever I don't know why this is happening to me, what do I see? I see the Lord by my side. I trust the relationship I have with him. So when you don't know why you are going through the darkness, trust the relationship. And I know that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Sometimes that valley period, sometimes, you know, it's very easy for us to say, okay, he's the devil. He's witches, his familiar spirit, he's the household enemy. Sometimes, my brother, my sister, our darkness could be our God's teaching tools our darkness could be our god's teaching tools let's go to mark 6 mark 6 verse 48 mark 6 and i know that god will help that my brother that my sister that you are going through that dark moments this word i know is for you mark 6 verse 48 to 41 mark 6 verse 48 to 41 the Bible says, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea and he was alone on the land. <laughs> then he saw them straining at, at rowing for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night. He came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by. Why did the Lord wait to the fourth time, to the fourth watch of the night? Why did the Lord wait between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m.? My brother, my sister, if you're a child of God, that you don't wake up in the middle of the night to pray between 12 and 4 a.m., begin to do that from now. Even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's 20 minutes. That's why by God's grace, all the glory to God on foundation on the soil rock ministry. We wake up Monday to Thursday, praying 3 a.m., reading the word of God. At the fourth watch, at the fourth watch, sometimes, my brother, my sister, that darkness is our God's teaching tools. The Lord was looking at them. Mm. He was looking at them. They were rowing. The sea was working against them. Everything seems to be go going against them. You will get to know God by going through the storms with him. You will get to know God by going through the storms with him. Listen to the English, with him. Not outside. Not outside. With him. Because when you are with the Lord, the Lord will teach you to lean upon him. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. He says you will hear a voice telling you this is the way to go. Light and darkness are the same with God. Let's go to Psalm 139 verse 12. Psalm 139 verse 12. So when you are in darkness, don't think that God is not there. <laughs> God is there. God is there. Psalm 139 verse 12. Psalm 139 verse 12. God will help all of us in the name of Jesus. Psalm 139 verse 12. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. So whatever you are going through, that darkness, don't think sometimes it's the devil. But at this particular teaching, the Lord is telling us sometimes it's divine. It's God's design. Because when you are passing through that valley that looks dark, it might look like a shadow of death. It might look like a shadow of death. It might look like a shadow of financial embarrassment. It might look like a shadow of, of shame, of reproach, of mockery. But the Lord is with you if you are his child. When it is God's design, there are some things that we must note. When it is God's design, don't help God. Abraham decided to help God. Ishmael came. And we all know what is happening in the world now. Moses decided to help God. The Lord has already said that he will set his, his children free. When the Lord spoke to Mo, uh, uh, Father Abraham, he said, your descendants, I will bless them. But for a certain period, they are going to be in darkness. That topic is for another day because Father Abraham slept. When the Lord told him to build a sacrifice, he slept off. Darkness came when he slept off. May we not sleep a sleep of 
disaster in the name of Jesus. May we not sleep when the Lord tells you, wake up in the name of Jesus. He slept off. And the birds of darkness came. And then that led to bondage for, for the next coming generation. But that's a topic for another day by God's grace. So he slept off and the Israelites were, were in, the, in the land of Egypt. But it was, our God is a covenant keeping God. When the Lord speaks, he doesn't return to him. The Lord has spoken. He said, your descendants, I will bless them. The Lord has spoken. And the Lord has raised somebody as the Lord is raising you. Each one of us were here for a purpose on earth. You are not here for a mistake. You are not here on a mistake. All of us will have missions on this earth. We have missions. Good missions, not terrible missions as a child of God. And the Lord has ordained that Father Moses was going to be the one to set them free. But he decided to help God. He saw two people fighting. He saw the Egyptian oppressing the Israelites. And he killed the Egyptian. Who sent him? Who sent him? So when it is God's design, don't try to help God. In his time, God will make all things beautiful for you. It is in your worst moment that God gives you best insight. I will repeat it. It is in your worst moment that God will give you insights. My life is a testimony. It was when things were bad. Like when I knew that, you know when you look to the front, nothing. You look to the back, you see nobody. You look to the right, it's disappointment. You look to the left, it's shame. You know what? That's when I got inspiration. That was when I decided I learned to lean upon the Lord. That's when I learned to lean upon him and say, God, if you don't help me, let nobody help me. That was when I learned to trust and obey him. Even when up to today, he's still helping me. If somebody promises me something now, I don't believe it when I see it. It was because during that, that dark moment of my life, when I leaned on human help, they failed me. It is in your worst moments that God gives you the best insight. It is in your worst moment you get inspiration. It is in your worst moment you will know that curse is indeed anyone that leans upon a man. But blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord in the book of Jeremiah. People will listen to you because you've earned the right to speak. I'll repeat it. When you learn to lean upon the Lord, when it is God's design, when you get insight from the Lord, people will listen to you because you've earned the right to speak. What do I mean by that? Father Moses was able to speak to the Israelites. Why? He had gone through some school. For how many years? For 40 years. He was in the wilderness, tending to chickens and goats and, and sheep. Then he had an encounter with the Lord. It was his zeal for God that made him break the tablet. When the Lord gave him, he said, how can these people do this? How can you do this? Because he had gotten deep insight about Jehovah. The zeal of the Lord hurt him up. And said, why? Why did you do this? Why did you do this? He had a divine encounters with the Lord. He knew what he was saying. When you pass through the valley and you come to the mountain, it is easy for you to relate to people and tell them, I have been through these things. Hey, don't worry, God will come through for you. And I thank God for the Lord. I thank God for that grace that the Lord made me, made me go through valley. Because now I can relate to people. I just have to the grace of God. I have natural empathy for people. I have it. I've been through it. I know what it is like. I know what it is like because I've been through that valley before the Lord by his grace lifted me to the mountain. So when people are going through whatever I've been through, I can relate. I can talk with them. I can empathize. I can sympathize. I can be with them along the way. Even though there are some when I was, be, I was with them, what do you they forgot them. They forgot me when they got to the mountain top. But that is my, that is my mission. That is what the Lord has called me for. Yeah, they got to the mountain, they forgot me. That's not the, that's not the point. The point is that what the Lord sent me, I did it. Allow God to teach you the things which can only be learned in that dark period. Let God teach you. Hey, I know it's difficult at times, very difficult, but it's the best. It is the best. Allow him to teach you. 
Yes. Oh, it looks, everything looks ah, dark, dark, dark. Father, I've prayed. You've prayed about the witches. It's not witch. You've prayed about this. Ah, what is happening now? Father, Lord, I fasted. I did this. Allow God to teach you. Tell, he will tell you the reason. I remember something. The Lord told me, he said, this is the reason why I'm making you pass through this dark period. If you don't, if I allow you, if I answer you now, you are not going to do what I called you for. So I've learned along that dark path, no matter the situation, I still lean upon him. Always remember, my brother, my sister, that life is a season. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 4. A woman that gets pregnant today, nine months time, she would, she, she would, she would give birth. After some time, the season of that child crawling will pass by. After some time, the season of that child squat, you know, moving the bottom on the floor will we pass. The season of nursery will pass. The season of primary will pass. You know, children, when you have children around you, when you take them to nursery and it's the first day at school, you'll be feeling so sad. After some time, the child will tell you, please go. Can you go back? Because the season of all this papering is over. You say, please, please, I want to be with my, my friends. Mommy, please, can you go? If after some time, your, your child will be telling you how to dress, come and pick them. Be like, mommy, why did you dress that way? Meanwhile, before, they, they, they don't have, they won't tell you that. Everything is season. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 says, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Whatever you are going through is a temporal thing. It is temporal. It is not permanent. That is why as children of God, when you are in the mountaintop, be careful. Be very careful. Don't look down on people that are going through the valley right now. Because it's a season. The person you looked down right now could be at the mountaintop tomorrow. Everything is a season. For that, my sister, that my brother, that you're going through that dark moment of your life, it is a season. It has an expiry date. Don't worry. And very, very soon, it will expire in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that you'll be able to hold on for the Lord to teach you through. Because one thing you must notice that during the darkness, God is there. He is there. He's a God of light and darkness. He's in the light, he's in the darkness. He created everything. Jesus waited until the storm was at his worst. They had lost hope, my brother, my sister. They had lost hope. Let's go to that Bible passage. They had lost hope. Matthew 14 verse 25. Matthew 14 verse 25. God will help all of us in the name of Jesus. Matthew 14 verse 25. Let's start from verse 24. Now, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Jesus was not in the boat. Jesus was not in the boat. <laughs> With Jesus in the boat, I can smile in the storm. Smile in the storm, smile in the storm with Jesus in the boat. I can smile in the storm while I'm sailing on. You might be in a situation right now. You looked around, you looked right, you look right, look forward, look backward. You are like, Jesus, are you here? You cry every night. It seems that the heavens are closed. You've done everything. That testimony is not coming. They had lost hope. Are you at the point of losing hope? Jesus waited until the storm was at his worst. <laughs> One thing you must note, my brother, my sister. When your testimony is around the corner, the storms are always a lot. You look right, storm, left. Somebody wants to annoy you. Backward. Another person is annoying you. It's because a testimony is coming. You have, we have to be descending. It took me time to realize that. When I see that, it seems that sometimes one of the things that the enemy always uses is relationship. I people that I'm close to. You just see them start misbehaving. I'm like, okay. I didn't know for, for some time. And I, I'm like, okay. All right. So I've learned something. Once I see that somebody wants to annoy me that you are close to me, I let you be. I let you be. Actually, when I've checked myself that I didn't do anything. I will let you be. I let go. Why? Because I don't want to hinder my testimony by being angry, by being malicious, by gossiping or be... 
sick, sick, and talking idle talk. I don't. So I just avoid the person. I just let you be. I let you be. Because I've noticed that's one of the tactics of the enemy. So once they know that something great is coming, my brother, my sister, they will attack you. Sometimes the Lord will wait. He will bring the storm. Let me see whether she will stand. Job was in, was in that situation. Left, right, he will say, let me see whether she will still wait. Let's see whether she will still trust me. In fact, you will receive a letter that they've already written. I remember one, that's a great testimony of my life. Two years ago, or was it three years ago? When the Lord called me into the ministry, I've been in the ministry by God's grace for quite some time, but that was when I decided like, okay, Father Lord, all about you. And then there were a lot of things going on, a lot of things, a lot of things. I couldn't, I couldn't cope. It was so much. I looked right, looked left, no help. When human help you, after some time, they will get tired. They will tell you that, am I the one that called you? Why don't you look for an option? Hey, it was so tough. And the Lord, the enemy used another person that will come and be tormenting me every day. Oh, look at this. Look at, I'm like, hey, Father Lord, this storm was a lot. It was so much, my brother, my sister. It was so much that sometimes I would cry. The Lord would say, get up, go and prepare for command in the morning. Hey, but thank God for grace. Grace, give me the grace to follow. I need the grace to follow. Give me the grace to follow. Your grace is sufficient for me. I thank God for grace and the Holy Spirit always speaking to me. Because just around the corner, my testimony was coming. Just around the corner, the Lord was about to lift me from that valley to mountain. So when you see me now, you are looking at evangelists. Hey, and you get angry with evangelists. It's God you are getting angry with. And that kind of testimony. Because evangelist has been through the valley. <laughs> She's been through it. Everybody goes through it at one point in time. We go through it in the journey. As Christians, when it is divinely ordained, the Lord will wait and see. Let me test her faith to the extreme. Let me see whether she will deny me. Let me see whether she will lie. He waited. That is because God is the one that dictates the timetable for our deliverance. God is the one that dictates our timetable for our deliverance. I pray for us that the day of your deliverance, you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. There is always a moment. That's why I love that song. Say, Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble prayer. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. There is always a day. All of us will have time to move for our deliverance. I pray that that day will not pass us by. In the name of God. Because there is a day. There is one moment. One moment. One moment. Because why? God is never late. Jesus was never late. He looked at them. He looked at them. He looked at it in the middle of the sea. They must have looked at it. They were like, hey, Jesus is not here. Ah, we're already in the middle of the boat. And they didn't know that God is the commander of the wind, the seas, is the owner of everything. That is the one that can break the laws of gravity. He walked upon the sea. Walked upon the sea. He raised the dead. He broke the law of gravity because he's the one that is the gravity himself. They didn't know that. They had not got into that relationship of knowing Jesus as the gravity breaker. As the commander of the wind and the sea. They didn't know that. They didn't know. They had not known that. Number two, the disciples didn't recognize him until he revealed himself to them. Often, my brother, my sister, the answer is right beside you. But we don't recognize it until God reveals it to you. Sometimes the answer to your testimony is that person that is sitting beside you. That is the angel the Lord has sent to you. Sometimes the answer to your breakthrough is that neighbor, that person that you saw inside the bus and you refused to help. Sometimes the answer to your testimony could be that sister that you are, you are despising. That Meanwhile, that's the, your destiny helper. It could be that brother, that person you look at and you be like, what can this person offer me? Because sometimes the packaging of God is not what we expect. It's not what we expect. It confers the foolish, the wise, the wisdom. Confers it to foolishness. Foolishness. We might not recognize it until God reveals it to you. Let's quickly go to that Bible. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, 
They were troubled, saying it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. <laughs> Just imagine the disciples. Ah, ghost, ghost, ghost on, in, in, on top of the sea. Probably they've been used to seeing ghosts. Probably they've been used to seeing demons tormenting them all about. They were like, oh, and then fear, the spirit of fear came again. My brother, my sister, until the Lord reveals himself to you, we'll just pray one prayer that we need a revelation of the Lord. The disciples didn't recognize him. Their testimony was right beside them. All Jesus needed to do was step into the boat and the storm would be over and they were shouting. Sometimes you've been shouting, shouting, you've been praying, you've done everything, you are still crying, 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 crying. Meanwhile, your answer is just beside you. Sometimes the Lord will tell you to do something very tiny. You know, sometimes, you know, most times, I keep, I told somebody, I said, sometimes, sometimes simplicity makes people, you know, sometimes when you are so simple, people just be like, mm, mm, nothing. So they want that abra abragada and all those goody goody goody. Simplicity of some things makes people doubt and they're like, mm, oh, mm. Meanwhile, your answer is just beside you. The Lord might just tell you, step out, do this, do that, just right beside you. And we don't recognize it. We don't understand. We don't, we don't understand. Let's quickly read Luke 5. Let's read another version. Luke 5 verse 1 to 3. Luke 5 verse 1 to 3. God will help us. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were fishing the nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boats. At that particular period, Apostle Peter must have felt so important that, wow, my Lord needs my boats. My brother, my sister, God doesn't need anything for him to accomplish his purposes from us. He doesn't need our credentials. He doesn't need our talent. He doesn't need our resources. But it is a, it is a, it is a privilege for the Lord to ask for your resources. It is a privilege for the Lord to say, lend me your boots. Are you lending God your boots? Are you lending God your talents? Are you lending God your resources? When you lend it to him, is humility. You are saying, Lord. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord. And he said, here I am, send me. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord. And he said, here I am, send me. Are you using that gift the Lord has placed in you? Are you using your resources for God? When Jesus came to the disciples that night, he was walking on the sea. <laughs> God was not sinking in the sea. He was walking on the sea. God is on top of that situation you are going through. Be at peace. He will do whatever it takes to reach and rescue you. No matter what storm you are right now, whether it is demonic storm, whether it is satanic arrows, whether it is the enemy, why, the, why you slept that the enemy came to sow, it, sow tears in your, in your testimony, there is good news for you today. And that good news is that the Lord is always on top of the situation. He will do everything to reach out to you, to save you. He will never leave you to sink in the boat of life. He will never leave you to sink in the storm of, the, of life. Your problem is just a platform to display his power over your life. Your problem, my brother, my sister, what you are going through, is just a platform for people to hear your testimony and say, God is good. I never see this kind of God before. Wonder, 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 wonder. That situation you are going through is a platform for the Lord to showcase his mightiness, his awesomeness, his majestic power. So just relax is in charge for that my brother my sister whatever storm you are facing right now whether you are in the middle of the storm you look to the front a storm you see you see the wind very boisterous everything seems to be working against you everything seems to be working against you. people seems don't people don't understand you all your helpers everybody seems to have run away for that brother that you are connected, the first decision you must make is to invite the storm stealer into your life. Is to invite Jesus Christ into your life. 
Let's go to Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans. Romans. The Lord will help all of us in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. God will help all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Masheke reboruko fala yana katari kata. Kile bo jema li kafuli yana kature bo skiri baba. Rata katula yana maje buruko fala yana katura baba. There is no other way to salvation except through Christ. You must confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now let's go to Romans. We're going to read Romans. Um, let's read Romans 8. Romans 8 verse. I don't want us to read all of it. Um, okay, let's read Romans 8 verse 32. He says, he who did not spare his son, his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So the first thing is for you to give your life to Jesus. So you'll be able to enjoy all the benefits of a child of God. That when you're going through any form of storm, the Lord Almighty will help you if you have a relationship with him. You won't sit down and say, why am I going through this? If God is love, why am I going through this? It is relationship. The moment you realize the relationship, you put your mind at rest. Once you have that relationship that is your maker, you put your mind at rest. All you need to do is just say these prayers after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, Satan, and your works. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. And for every other person, let's begin to pray for the revelation. You say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Father, I want to know you more. I want to know you more. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, my Father, I want to know you more. I want to know you more, Lord. I want to know you more. That no matter the situation, I know you will come true for me. I know you will come forth for me. Father, I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Reveal yourself to me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Father, Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor, I give you adoration, I thank you, Lord, because you're a father who never fails. Thank you, Lord, for your word, thank you, Lord, for your kindness, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Oh, Lord, my father, everlasting father, for your word that we have heard today, Father, Lord, that whatever storm anybody is going through right now, my father, my king, father, in your mercy, father, please storm, seal this storm, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Step into our situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace to hold steadfast to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give us the grace, my father, to allow you to teach us lord in the name of jesus help us lord my father for everyone that has given their life to you my father anything that will draw them away from you my father please take it away from them they will not fail they will not falter any relationship my father that will take them away from you my father please cut off that relationship by force in the name of jesus father lord that grace will be able to finish well let it rest upon them ah father lord that when the trumpet shall sound we shall all make it to heaven in jesus mighty name i have prayed Amen, amen, amen. God is great. God is wonderful. Congratulations to that person that has given their life to Jesus. You've made the best decision. That's the best decision you can ever make. So all you need to do right now, my brother, my sister, is to begin to walk your salvation with fear and trembling. By reading the word of God, obeying the word of God. Read the word of God, obey the word of God. And the Lord Almighty will help each one of us in the name of Jesus. If you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you're able to get notification. Like it, share. That is a form of evangelism. Share, let other people know because I know that somebody somewhere will be blessed by this teaching. And I know that God will help us in the name of Jesus. So our next activity will be two weeks time because uh, we have our fasting. As we all know, on Foundation on a Solid Rock Ministry, we normally have fasting in the last two days of the month. Entering a new month, we fast. So this month, by God's grace, is going to be our juice fast. Make sure you connect. There are just some problems that cannot live except by fasting. That's just the plain truth. That's what the Lord said. Fasting. You have to fast. So if you've been going through a lot of things and everything seems to be going wrong for you, connect with us. Let us fast. Let's pray together. And I know that God will help each one of us in the name of Jesus. So we're going to be starting on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Make sure you connect. It's going to be on Facebook. Foundation on a Soil Rock Ministry, Matthew 7, verse 25. 
foundation on a solid rock ministry matthew 7 verse 25 look at the flyers get updates and then if you want to contact me send an email to me which is foundation on a solid rock ministry at yahoo.co.uk foundation on a solid rock ministry at yahoo.co.uk visit our websites www.foundation on a solid rock ministry dot co dot uk www dot foundation on a solid rock ministry dot co dot uk follow me on twitter also lara for christ and i know that the lord will help each one of us in the name of jesus will not falter will not fail in the mighty name of jesus have a testimony filled week you will testify in the mighty name of jesus shalom